what does it mean, the Alliance Party coming into the European Parliament as the, the one of Northern Ireland's MEPs? Well, I think it's a massive departure from what we're used to. Usually we sent two unionist MEPs and a nationalist MEP um, to Brussels, and this is the first time we've ever elected someone to represent all of Northern Ireland who is unaligned, who doesn't take a position on the constitutional question in Northern Ireland and doesn't define their politics around that. So that to me is a real a real change in dynamics in terms of Northern Ireland and I think what it shows is the impact that Brexit has had on the discourse in Northern Ireland politically because where people were normally focused on the border, on the constitutional question, whether we remained in the UK or, or whether we had a united Ireland, suddenly now the conversation has changed to whether we remain in the EU or we exit as part of this process of Brexit and clearly Northern Ireland is very strongly remain. Alliance are a very pro-European party and I think particularly a lot of unionists who felt that their politicians had become very Brexit focused and supportive of Brexit um, really didn't feel there was anyone there to represent them and so I think a combination of that um, and disaffected nationalist voters who I think by and large are weary of the problems we've had at Stormont um, decided to change their vote. We saw it in local government just before uh, the European election but we saw a massive surge um, coming into the European election and I think it also mirrors what happened um, in GB where we saw the Liberal Democrats and the Green Party do exceptionally well. How do you intend to make your mark within the Parliament, within to that group and to other MEPs? Well, I think first and foremost, I have, a, I have a single job, a single mission when I was sent here by Northern Ireland people and that was that we would remain within, within the EU. So it's my job to convince people here, first of all, to give the UK the space because I believe that public opinion has changed in the last three years and continues to change. So I think we need to encourage those who are becoming impatient with the UK to give us that time and space because I believe that if they do, we will stay within the EU and that is what everyone says they want to happen but also to use the position that I have and the mandate that I have to go to Westminster and to convince those people who still think that a hard Brexit holds absolutely no risk in terms of the Northern Ireland peace process, the Good Friday Agreement and all of those other things that they are wrong about that, that it is absolutely critical that we remain in the EU because it is that balance of cooperation, collaboration, the diminution of our international borders and frontiers that have allowed us actually to carve out a space in Northern Ireland that isn't about being in the UK or in the Irish Republic but actually allows people to get beyond that and deal with the everyday issues and politics of health and education, infrastructure and all of the other challenges that we face. So those are, I suppose those are the two aspects that I'm focused on. I believe that if we're going to rescind Article 50 it's probably going to require a people's vote. Now if that was being put in train now that could be done by October but unfortunately without a British Prime Minister to drive that process forward that is unlikely to happen ahead of the deadline so I will be arguing very strongly stick to the withdrawal agreement keep the backstop that's crucial for Northern Ireland's future if we do Brexit but give us the space and the time we require in order to get the change of heart that we need in the UK because I believe it is eminently possible that we will be able to change direction and actually remain within the EU in the long term.